This look okay? Good, okay. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Let's see, what's today? Tuesday. Today's the 13th, right? 13th. Okay. Today is Tuesday. It is December 13th, 2016, and this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Pat Garner. Pat, where are we? We are at the Paramount Theater. This is the Paramount Theater? There it is. You know, I don't think I've been in this corner. We're over near the elevator, aren't we? We are. Okay. Nice table. Right. Today is Tuesday. If I don't tear the table apart, we're in good shape here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, later on this morning, uh, today's program, let's see. We will have word and update on the Chamber of Commerce of Wayne County from Kate Daniels. We'll also be hearing from AHA. Uh -huh. We'll be hearing from Sherry Archibald, but she doesn't know it yet. She'll be walking in here in a few minutes uh, because she's got, she's got a, uh, she's going to tell us about a, a, a big doings coming up here in January. And I'm all excited about this and you are as well. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll tell you all about that in just a few minutes. That's just part of today's program. So what's going on? Um, the Senior Center has Frida Owen, which will be holding a cookie exchange at the Senior Center. Oh boy on December the 14th, which is, is Wednesday. Tomorrow. That's right. You bring your favorite store-bought cookies, and you need 24, and bring them to the Arts and Crafts Room in the Senior Center, and you will exchange your cookies. For other cookies. Very tasty. Yeah, it's a cookie exchange yes. thing. All right, sounds like a lot of fun. Anything else going on at the Senior Center? Um, they have their Ugly Sweater Contest coming up. Ugly Sweater Contest. That will be December the 21st mm -hmm. at noon. Okay. And you can come dressed in your ugliest sweater for a chance to win the first annual Ugly Sweater Contest trophy. Okay. I'll go along with that. Yes. I wonder though, and I've often wondered this, why are they called sweaters? Look it up. That will be something. Do some research on that. Do some research and let me know. 25 words or less. Where the word sweater came from. I'm going to have to look that one up. If you're an etymology person. Uh, that that could be your trivia question. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. And not today, but I'll have to look it up first. <laughs> I mean, why do, they, why do they call sweaters? If you wear them, do you... No. If you have any information on the ugly sweater contest, you can contact Rob Phillips at the Senior Center at 919-731-1589. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? When you wear sweaters, that means you... <sighs> too easy. Okay. What else is happening around the area? What else have <clears> we <throat> got? Take a selfie with an Elfie. A selfie with an Elfie. Is that Jack? That's Jolly. Jolly. Yeah, I get them confused. Jolly Majingle is still running around downtown mm -hmm. all the way to the 23rd. When you find Jolly Majingle, you take a selfie and you post your selfie on the social media, which is Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or Snapchat, where you find your clues to find Jolly. And you get a chance to win downtown dollars. There you go. It's not hard to do. It's a lot of fun to play. But he's in a different store or location every day. Jolly's moved around every day. So if you happen to spot him in a business, you go online, you find the clues, you spot him in a business, take your selfie, and submit it. You might win some downtown dollars. That's right. That's a lot of fun. All right. And just in time for Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What else have we here? Do, 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 do. Let's see, today's the 13th. Ah, you know what? We're less than two weeks from Christmas. Two weeks. Christmas was two weeks from this past Sunday. Are you ready? Bring it on. Goldsboro Mayor's Youth Council having their gift wrapping hours at Berkeley Mall for a donation. You can have your gift wrapped. Now, let's see, today's the 13th. They just came off a thing this past Sunday. Okay, the next time they'll be out at Berkeley Mall will be this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 16th, 17th, and 18th. Wrapping gifts, Friday beginning at 4 o'clock, Saturday beginning at 10 a.m., Sunday beginning at 1 p.m. Going till 10 o'clock Friday and Saturday and going till 5 o'clock on Sunday. So you want to get there 
as early as possible because I hope they're busy wrapping gifts for a donation. Goldsboro Mayor's Youth Council gift wrapping uh, at Berkeley Mall. And all proceeds will go to the Goldsboro Mayor's Youth Council Scholarship Fund and Spring Convention. And if you'd like information about this, you can call cities, the uh, city's Community Relations Department at 919-580-4359. Talk to Shai Cole. There you go. There you go. What's that? Ah. Something else? What's that? Wings over Wayne. Ah, yes. Wings over Wayne. Coming up. May 20th and 21st. <laughs> and the Blue Angels will be in town. They are the guests uh, highlight this year in preparation for the upcoming Wings Over Wayne Air Show and Open House May 20th through 21st. The, the Blue Angels will be in town. And uh, in preparation of that, one of the Blue Angels planes stopped in here in Goldsboro a couple of weeks ago. And uh, uh, they came in to kind of set things up for the air show in May. They, set, they come in early to check on accommodations, to check on the strip, to check on the airstrip, that is, to check on... Uh, things that uh, they need and things that uh, the, the base will expect uh, from the Angels to just kind of get everything coordinated. So that was good. Also coming up, we've got uh, December 20th is the date to put on your calendar for the Community Christmas Giveaway. Lift your family spirit and hope by receiving a blessing from the folks at the Catholic Charities of the Diocese of Raleigh. That will be coming up on the 20th of December. They will give away new or gently used toys, cleaning items, food items, baby items, clothing, and shoes. This will be taking place at 201 West Ash Street. That's between George and James on West Ash Street, West Ash, near the traffic circle downtown, but between George and James. And this will be taking place December 20th between 9 o'clock and 2 p.m. And if you have questions about that, call 919-947-0802. And on January 16th, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., um, the City of Goldsboro and Wayne County inviting you to the 29th Annual Martin Luther King Jr. Holiday Luncheon. And this will be taking place at Goldsboro Raleigh District Assembly at 214 West Hooks River Road, Monday the 16th at noon. Cost is, six, is $15 per ticket. $15, RSVP no later than January 9th, all right? And you can RSVP by calling 919-580-4359. We're going to go to our next segment of the program. It's an interview, and we'll be back here on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Well, our guest is Sherry Archibald, who owns and operates <laughs> the entire block. Of the yeah. <laughs> Bring some of that in. <laughs> We're at the Paramount Theater, of course. How are you? I'm good. Always. You are. Oh, yeah, terrific. Always good to good see you. Good to have you here. I learned earlier today some really good news about the Malthus Brothers. Good. Yeah. Good. And you didn't know I was going to ask you about this because you just walked in. I did. I just walked back, right. but that's good. I'm ready to go. It surprised me. Let's talk about the Malthus Brothers and their big thing coming up here in January. What's going on? Well, we're very excited. Um, the Paramount Theater Foundation is supporting a project that we have written a grant for. Um, which we won't find out about until after they're here for their concert. However, this um, project we're calling Heading Home. Um, it is about the boys. It's about um, preservation. It's about them and the city that they have come from, um, the changes that they've seen um, to evolve and the preservation that they um, are so passionate about. And then also the changes that have happened here in our city and the preservation efforts that we've taken yet still the efforts to move forward and become a stronger community. So it's, it's really a nice parallel to see both of them. They're very passionate about this theater and our downtown, and so it's a, it's a great fit. Now they're going to be performing here, aren't they, on the 13th? They will be, and that's part of some of the project. Um, the project Heading Home is really a documentary. We have um, a production team that has been meeting with public television that's very, very interested in um, showing this documentary on our local um, public UNC TV station, mm -hmm. and so we are excited about that. It will have a piece of this concert in it, but it will also follow them over the next several months while they're touring. Um, they are certainly here in North Carolina, but they're touring between here and Nashville quite often lately. Mm -hmm. And so they'll be capturing some of that as well. And they'll do that as well as interviewing 
um, the boys and the family and a lot of their patrons that are just so in love with them and have watched them grow up. Who doesn't love the Malthus brothers? If you spend any time with them at all, mm -hmm. Or just watch them. I mean, you can be in the audience and never seen them, never met them before. You just really have a connection to them. You do connect. And yeah. it's, um, I've certainly seen that and felt it, but it's really exciting to see when you, when you see this audience who will come back over and over and feel like they're coming to see their boys um, that they've been watching that maybe they've only seen once a year when they come to see their concerts, but they're just so passionate about it. Here are two young men who grew up here in Wayne County, of course, in Goldsboro, who are just as unassuming as they could possibly imagine to be. Definitely. They worked in a transmission shop, mm -hmm. and they worked in a transmission shop while they were touring the nation mm -hmm. as country music stars. With Merle Haggard, with the famous Merle Haggard, Merle Haggard. Exactly. yes. They had an incredible opportunity um, with Merle and uh, really heartbroken when he passed, yeah. but are dedicated to carrying on that traditional music and they're, um, they love that. They, they love um, storytelling mm -hmm. and they're writing quite a bit of their own music now as well. And so love hearing a little bit of both. Um, they're so fun to be around. They are. They are um, com just as, as brothers or siblings can be. They're very different, but the two of them are best friends and look out for each mm. other, um, laugh constantly <laughs> at each other, yes. um, and joke around and have a good time. And that what you see on the stage is everything that they are behind the stage. Exactly, they're the same off the stage as they are on the yes. stage. I mean, in fact, very often you'll hear people say, you know, is that really how they talk? I, yeah, I, um, I, I had a, a really unique and exciting opportunity to see them at a showcasing conference in uh, Florida um, this past September. And I was so excited because these were my boys that were in Florida right. with all of my colleagues from 13 states that had come to see all kinds of different performers. And so I was really able to talk them up. I had on my Malpas Brothers t-shirt. I was showing it <laughs> off. I was so excited. And I was bringing, you know, colleagues from Mississippi and New Orleans and all of them that I have met through different projects mm -hmm. and said, you've got to hear these guys. Well, when we get in there to see this showcase, we weren't in a huge venue. We were in a, a small room. So we were very, it was a very intimate setting. And, you know, we're, I'm sitting across four and five different people that I've had an opportunity to meet and get to know over the last few years. And I'm telling them, you know, you guys are going to love them. And they start talking, and every one of them are leaning over and looking at me saying, come on, this is not how they really talk, is it? And I said, it really is. What you see is what you get. They, they just have a, an accent that is all about country, it and is. it's because that's what they love. Well, I have a confession to make. When I first met them years and years and years ago, when I first started talking to these young men, I did not notice it because I'm from the part of the state where people talk like that. Yes. I'm, my, my parents, my family, is, they're all from Stokes County, up okay. north, north of mm -hmm. Winston-Salem in the Wilkesboro, Mount Airy, Mayberry, if gotcha. you will, gotcha. area, mm -hmm. Pilot Mountain in that area. That's, that's where my folks are from and grew up. And, and people in that area sound just like sound these two guys. Sound a lot like it. Yeah. Well, they were always two questions. Do they really sound like that and do they really do their hair yeah. like that? Yeah. And do they do their own hair? And they do, of course. They do, yes. They do their own hair and they don't go, I mean, Taylor is a little more relaxed about it. Christopher does not go to the mailbox without fixing his hair like that. I mean, this is just the stories that I've heard, and yeah. I, I mean, it's it's really it's really hilarious. He's just he is dedicated to that hair. He loves his hair. <laughs> yes. But it's not overwhelming to him. It's just no. uh, he's it's just part of the way he is. <laughs> that's, that's exactly that's part right. Of Chris. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it I'll tell you. Um, We'll have to do another interview and include Mr. Will because he is so excited about this project. Um, we're happy that the foundation is able to sponsor this. This grant, um, should we get it, um, it will help to, it will pay for this funding that we need for um, recording the documentary and getting it on public television. Um, if we don't get it, we're moving forward. We're mm -hmm. obviously having the concert, concert, but instead of just having the concert, we've been doing some fundraising to be prepared. Since we don't know if we have the grant or not, we're doing some fundraising to do some recording and um, videotaping of this concert. Right. And before and after, we plan to do some interviews with a lot of patrons that are here. It's the perfect time. Yes. This is home, and um, this is where a lot of people are coming to see them every year, year after year. 
And this is where a lot of people who may not have ever physically had a conversation with them, but feel like they know them and they want yeah. to talk about their story. Yes, yes indeed. Two young men whose feet are firmly planted mm -hmm. on the ground. And you know, one of the reasons we're doing this is we felt like <clears throat> it is kind of, right now, appears to be this tipping point for them. Um, I really feel like they're on a brink of something very big. and. Mm -hmm they um, are, are moving forward with it, doing the best that they can to keep up with a job at home and family at home and still do this tour. Um, but they're getting pulled into some really exciting opportunities. Um, they were on Larry's Diner, which is a cable television show. And just like what happens everywhere they go, they, the folks just fell in love with them. So they asked them to go on the cruise with them. There's a Larry's Diner cruise. Is there? And I didn't so know the that. Malpas brothers are going to have their first cruise experience. <laughs> I would pay money to see that. Yes. <laughs> um, but they're going to perform. <clears throat> These things are just kind of stepping up. And, you know, we talk about the correlation between uh, them and preservation in our city and the changes. And we've certainly seen some mm. exciting and significant changes in our city lately. Yes, so we it have. Really is parallel to what's going on with them as well. Well, I would love to say and salute uh, the Malpas Brothers' parents, who Absolutely. certainly do, did Chris an amazing Andrea. job. Chris and Andrea Malpas have yes. done a wonderful job and continue to do so. Yes, they do. Um, you, know, you know, even after you're 18, you're still mom and dad, and so they, um, they still are very supportive. And, of course, Chris is still traveling with them quite often, yeah. and so he yeah. continues to do that, and Andrea has been able to hand over and get they are, they now have a very competent and very strong agent which is really is one of those things that's pushing them to that next level excellent um and so andrea is very <laughs> happy about that because now she's able to spend time with that sweet grandbaby uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to them excellent sherry this is great i appreciate you taking time to talk to us about this upcoming Thank project you. and good luck with the grant thank you it is january the 13th is the concert right. um tickets are 20 dollars. they are 20 dollars, <laughs> and we do have some left but i'll tell you they we usually sell out and they're yeah. going quickly so certainly contact us if you would like tickets for the malpas brothers show um and then i'd love to have you back again to talk either before or after the show and maybe we'll include mr will so we can talk a little more on behalf of the foundation supporting this effort. Excellent. We'd love to. Always great to be talking to David Wheel. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for being Thank with you. us. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. We're back on Wayne Goldsboro Television from the Paramount Theater in downtown Goldsboro, South Center Street. Uh, speaking of the Paramount, the Paramount is asking you, as an art patron, to help them with a survey um, that will help support programming throughout the year at the Paramount, but not only at the Paramount, but also across Wayne County. They ask you to take a moment to complete a brief anonymous survey and help determine the economic impact of the arts in Wayne County. Uh, your responses will be of help to prove the point that art means business. It does, it does. You can go online to the Paramount Theater at goldsboroparamount.com and find that survey link. Complete the survey, it just takes a few minutes. And from there, you uh, will help the arts of Wayne County and showing of the economic impact, right? What's special about today? What is special? Well, I'll ask you first. Uh, today is the 13th, right? All right, today being the 13th, let's see what's special about today. Today is <laughs> Pick a Pathologist Pal Day. All right, that's what it says right there. Pick, is that it? Pick a Pathologist Pal Day. All right, let's take a look at today's trivia question. That's the only thing about special about today. All right, do you know any pathologists? I don't know any pathologists myself. All right, here's today's trivia question. The trivia question is... Everybody loves Christmas stamps. Do you love Christmas stamps? Yes, okay. This time of the year, especially. Christmas stamps. What nation was the very first to use Christmas stamps? Here's a clue. It's European. It was not the U.S. This country was the first, this nation was the first country to use Christmas stamps, not seals, stamps, mail to mail, all right? The year was 1937. Tell me. 
which European country was the very first in the world to use Christmas stamps? We'll have that answer for you coming up in the next segment of the program here on Wayne Goldsboro Television. Today we're at the Chamber Office at uh, the Chamber of Commerce of Wayne County on North William Street here talking with Kate Daniels. Hello! Hello, Wayne Alley. Always good to see you. Your hands good are warm. Good to see you. That's nice. I, I've warmed yeah. them up for you. Well, it's a little chilly here of it late. Is. Yeah. It is, but it's supposed to be. If it were warm, we'd be complaining about it being too I'm warm. Too it warm. is chilly and it's supposed to be. It's the holidays. It's Christmas time. We're standing yes. in front of this beautiful Christmas tree yes. at the uh, Chamber Office here. I just kind of wanted to uh, talk to you a little bit about what the Chamber has done, succeeded, briefly, because I know you have really been busy this year. Sure. And, uh, you had how many projects you were working on? There's 115 year? programs and events throughout the year. Wow. So um, those are, are documented events and programs that the mm -hmm. Chamber staff works diligently on throughout the year. Um, and then on top of that, of course, as much time and energy as we can spend with our membership and also community events, you know, community-wide. Um, um, we are certainly a part of the fabric of our community and uh, feel it's incredibly important for us to bring people together for collaborative issues and, and work, and, uh, and we, we work really hard year-round to be a part of it community-wide. You know, we were just at uh, Lane Tree here a couple of weeks ago with the education yes. hot topic there. Wow, that was amazing. It was. Those three gentlemen, uh, those three experts in the community, well-respected, uh, mm -hmm. highly regarded, uh, Dr. Kerstetter, Dr. Dr. Uh, Thomas Walker, and uh, Dr. Dunsmore, all uh, talking about education, and it was enlightening as to uh, what we're able to be doing here in Wayne County for education. That's absolutely right. And you know, it's one of those things where when we do these hot topic events, and we do four a year um, on different areas, you know, I think I know, oh, I know what's going on with what they're working on, their collaborative efforts, mm -hmm. and you really don't. You get these gentlemen in a room and go, I didn't realize that that piece, that element was there. So mm -hmm. um, in any community, education um, is, is of most importance. We always want to make it better and stronger. There's been a lot of changes in our community in, the, in recent years and in recent months, and I think change is going to continue. But with that change, people need to remember there's great leadership at the top. We know it starts at the top, um, and there are some talented, talented educators and team members um, within the entire school system, not only in early education, but K through 12 um, and beyond. We're incredibly blessed here. Indeed. And you know, there was, uh, you recall, I'm sure, the, the, uh, earlier in the year, there was a, uh, a hot topic on health. Right, absolutely. So we do an annual healthcare hot topic, um, and the, and we'll have another one the beginning of the year in in 2017. So stay tuned for that. We'll certainly be sharing when that's coming about. But we do we talk about um, economic development. And we talk about you know what does that have to do not only in North Carolina but here in Wayne County. Um, what's it going to mean with that? And then we talk about transportation. A um, lot of changes in transportation, and one of the things we talk about is the decisions that have been made on, um, you look at the 70 bypass, that didn't happen two years ago. That was talked about past 18 years um, has been a, a topic of discussion, but it relates to everything that we do here in Wayne County, um, and of course getting goods and services and people traveling through. And I love the uh, legislative, uh, hot, uh, the, not necessarily hot topics, yes. but the breakfast. Uh, they are hot topics. They, though, are, they? are hot topics because they're very interesting. That's uh, right. You we're able to bring local legislators into That's right. Wayne County to meet and talk about what's going on in Raleigh. Absolutely. And, you know, our legislators, and we, and we try to help communicate this throughout the year, and they certainly do. They're covering a lot of territory. They're representing a lot of people. And the chamber sees our role as being that voice and letting people understand that if you're a member of the chamber, you know, it's a collective voice. So if there's a concern to your business or you see a community issue, bring it to the chamber. Because if it's affecting you or it's something you see, um, it's likely that it's uh, affecting other people or businesses. And we work to affect change. We're part of an eastern region here at the Wayne County Chamber, so we're able to leverage that voice even higher. So those hot, those, you said hot topics, and they are, they're not called a hot topic, but we do a before session and then an end of session mm -hmm. um, right. update, and it's so informative. It's so important to hear what our legislators um, are working on, and it's so important that they hear from the community. Well, that's just a handful of the meetings of the, uh, of the programs that you do bring to the public. Sure. 
that are so informative. Right. And they're all, you know, rooted in the understanding of when we can educate each other mm -hmm. and we can partner with each other. You look at all the successes that Wayne County has had, not just this past year, but over the course of um, since our existence right. here, they've all happened not because of one or two leaders or, um, you know, a one small group of people. It's happened because there's incredible collaboration. And Wayne County has really um, been a model for that, that other communities are looking at. So any of these projects you hear or um, groups that have formed mm -hmm. or um, in good times and in bad, it happens when there's collaborative ed efforts. And so just like you said with the education hot topic, yeah. I mean, you had some leaders at different, different um, levels of education, but they're working together because it takes all of us to do that to really affect change. That it does indeed. But you know, Kate, I'm sure that there are some people who do not realize all the programs that you do have. Sure. And, and projects that you do work on throughout the year. These are, these are open to the public. They're very informative. And so uh, it would be easy to uh, misunderstand the purpose of the Chamber of Commerce of Wayne County. Well, and we, you know, we do a lot in the community, but, you know, we exist for, for businesses here. We exist for, um, for the community. So right now we've got almost 600 members that are uh, members of the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce. We've got an incredible staff here that works to, to meet the needs. Every business has a different need. We've got some businesses that's, a, that's one person, and their business may be um, done through their car or out of their garage. Um, and then we've got the largest employer in Wayne County. So there's a lot of needs. We've worked really hard this year to kind of pinpoint, you know, what it, what, what's the best way to, to meet the needs? Do we offer programs year-round in here for furthering education seminars? But not everybody can leave their office. So this year, the Chamber debuted a um, Zip Ed Tech, where you can access hundreds upon hundreds of resources for online education. So we provide that kind of at your convenience. We provide that face-to-face -face through events throughout the week and throughout the year. Um, and, and really, we're, we're, I think we're a pretty progressive chamber when it comes to making sure that we're constantly evolving. I would think so. You also offer many programs online as well. Sure, absolutely. So on all this information can be found on our website. Mm -hmm. um, we also uh, debuted My Chamber app, which is a free download um, on your smartphone. <coughs> and um, the beauty of this is it, it's only for our chamber members are listed on there, but the entire mm -hmm. community um, can can access this and download it and you know who the members are you know where the hot deals are yeah. if there's military discounts and um, all the information you need is right there so we've literally put the membership in the palm of the community all hands. right is that waynecountychamber.com yes sir right, just, you got it you're good yeah. you're good if i put you on the spot i think you know our phone number too well yeah I'm, <laughs> i don't like to yes i do know it's 734-2241 yes sir 919-734-2241 and you're at, uh, what is this, uh, 200 block of? 308. 308. North William Street. Oh, William Street, all right. And we would love to see you. We are um, in a beautiful, wonderful building here on William Street. Mm -hmm. We are right behind the Wells Fargo Caddy Corner to um, BB&T. So we're right off Ash Street. Um, also home to travel and tourism. So you can right. come um, and learn more about uh, opportunities here and beyond in Wayne County. And also communities and schools. And Crime Stoppers is upstairs. So we keep good company here yes, at the Wayne County indeed. Chamber. This is great. It's a great building, and uh, people are invited to come anytime and talk to you oh, about anything absolutely. they may want to talk about. Absolutely. Or commerce, or travel and tourism, or crime stoppers. Absolutely. Or come see schools. us. All right. Kate Daniels, thank you. Thank you. Kate is the Chamber of Commerce of Wayne County President, and we appreciate very much your talking with us. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas. Oh, and Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas. <laughs>
Um, a contracted debris removal service, Custom Tree Care, will start picking up construction debris that is placed on the side of the roads that is in Wayne County. Wayne County. Not the city of Goldsboro. Wayne County, not the city. Um, the construction debris will be placed on the right of way in order to be picked up. The debris that is not on the side of the right of way cannot be removed by this service. Also note that this is for construction debris only. And mattresses and couches and all that stuff. That's right. The only thing they won't pick up is, is, uh, is trees and limbs, stuff like that. That's correct. The county has been divided into nine different zones that will be focused on one at a time. We will send out notifications via the code red as they begin in each zone. If you should have any questions or concerns, you can contact the Office of Emergency Service at 919-731-1416. Remember that they will not go anywhere, they will not go anywhere around your home to pick up debris. It has to be by the curb. That's correct. All right, in the, in the, in the, in the, um, right away. In the right away, thank you. In the right of way, it has to be right there. So they will not go anywhere but right there. And if it's not there, they won't pick it up. And that includes, of course, uh, mattresses and uh, sofas and chairs and stuff like that. Construction debris would be old wood, and lumber, shingles, anything like that. So uh, just remember that. And then nine zones. That's right. If there was a, if there was, I wonder if there's an O zone. I guess not. But you will be contacted through the code red. Code so red. if you do not have code red, you can go to wangov.com. Mm -hmm. You can scroll to the bottom of the website mm -hmm. and um, apply for the code red. It's free. All you have to do is key in your information, your name, your number, and you can be notified through code red. And what code red will do is anytime there's an emergency in Wayne County, for instance, a, any sort of uh, weather activity, inclement weather activity such as uh, uh, ice storms or snowstorms or tornadic activity or, or uh, turbulent weather, you are informed, you are alerted through Code Red. So when they begin this uh, removal service, you will be alerted as in your zone as to when they'll start picking up. That's when you need to get everything out by the curb, right? That's correct. All right. Well, do you, ever, do you like bees? Do you like honey? The honey, yeah. Bees are good. Bees are good. Uh, beekeeping programs to help create a better understanding of honeybee health and their impact within the food chain and sustainable agriculture. Um, the basic beekeeping class is open to anyone interested in becoming a new beekeeper or those wanting to refresh their beekeeping knowledge and skills. Learning topics will include the history of beekeeping, bee biology, beekeeping equipment, pest and pesticides, beehive management, honey extraction, honey products, swarm capture, and how to combine and split hives. You ever had hives? The course is sponsored by the Beekeepers of the News in partnership with the Wayne County Cooperative Extension Office. This class begins January 7th and goes through February 14th. Now this will be taking place at the Wayne County Co Cooperative Extension at 208 West Chestnut Street, corner of George and Chestnut, downtown. Okay, and it starts on January 7th. The second class is on the 14th, the third on the 21st of January, and then the 28th of January, and then the last class is on February 4th. It's five classes. Each class will start at 9 a.m. and will go until 1 p.m. This is on a Saturday. These are Saturdays now. January 7th, 14th, 21, 28th, and February 4th, 9 to 1. Class reviews provided before each class. The test review for the NC Certified Beekeeper will be the last day of class, February 4th. If you would like to register, there's three ways of doing that. You can pre-register and pay, for the Wayne, pay at the Wayne County Cooperative Extension Office, corner of George and Chestnut, during office hours. Call 919-731-1520 for more information. Bring your receipt to the first class or to all the classes. The second way is to mail your registration form and your check to Beekeepers of the News, P.O. Box 977 Goldsboro, 27533. The third way is an on-site registration that begins at 8 a.m. The class begins at 9 a.m. The cost is $50 per person, or the whole family 
can learn how to beekeep, keep bees for 75 bucks, the whole family. Cost includes a textbook, classroom training materials, a notebook, refreshments, and ongoing training with a certified beekeeper or mentor. Uh, one textbook per individual or family, one textbook. And you can make your checks payable to Beekeepers of the Noose. You can go online to Facebook, Beekeepers of the Noose. Or you can go to their web page, which is beekeepersofthenoose.com. Okay? Okay. A lot of beekeeping. <clears throat> Next year we'll have C keeping, D keeping, E keeping. <clears throat> okay. We have an answer to today's trivia question. I'm glad you asked. What was the first country to have Christmas stamps? Not Christmas seals, but Christmas stamps that you mail letters with. The first nation to do so was in Europe. The year was 1937, and the country was Austria. Austria, yeah. That's a, that's a Christmas traditional kind of a country. It is indeed, Austria. Well, is that gonna wrap it? Oh. Booze and lose it. Oh, oh yeah. The Booze and Lose It campaign continues across North Carolina, and that of course includes Wayne County. Do not drink and drive. It is dangerous. You have a lot to lose if you are caught drinking and driving. It's just not worth the headache, not worth the, the problems that you will encounter. It's dangerous. Could, uh, it, it puts your life and the lives of your family or other families in danger. What's so hard about that? Don't do it. All right? Or have a designated driver, which means you're not drinking and driving. All right? So that's going to wrap it up for today, right? That's it. Have a great day. Today being Tuesday, we'll be back on... Uh, <clears throat> tomorrow. Tomorrow with another of whatever this was. So until tomorrow, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Pat Garner. And this is Wayne Goldsboro Television. Mm -hmm.